All right, and Happy New Year. I'm, I think I'm allowed to say it. It is past the middle of January, and I'm really looking forward to our call today. I think we've got a couple of people joining us. Kathy Vaughn is here. I know some of our alumni also indicated that they might be dropping in and just looking forward to the conversation. So, hey, Su hi, hey Susie. Hey, Kathy, how are you doing today? Good to see you. How's the day going? And I'm just recording. We're just going to get started. So I'm here today, Kathy Vaughn, our team lead for team coaching is here with me in another call, right? We've had sort of a, a busy year start with the new ICF team coaching um, announcement just before the holidays. I did a few calls in the fall on this new advanced certification in team coaching, which many are calling now the ACTC. And as someone who went through the pilot and was part of a longer process in terms of mapping the team coaching competencies, as well as celebrating this year, 2023 is actually 10 years since the publication of my second book, From One to Many Best Practices for Group and Team Coaching. So it's really exciting to host today's call no doubt first of probably many, but um, I thought it would be useful for Kathy and I to maybe sit down and talk a little bit about this because we actually, I talked earlier, Kathy, you don't know this, but talked earlier with some of our alumni uh, who have been through group coaching essentials or team coaching essentials. Some can't make today's call, but you're probably listening in and going, hmm, I've started training. What's next for me? So Kathy, gonna throw it over to you for a minute. Like what's, uh, what's interesting from your perspective as a practicing team coach for quite many years and also in your role as team lead, what do you find interesting about the new ATCC, ACTC? Wow, so Jennifer, I think the first thing for me, uh, I, I'm, I'm struck on two levels. One is the documentation. Um, I always feel like apart from our agreements, we are not meant to keep notes and records um, of our work and also, there's been good faith agreement of supervision, which both of us do, and even mentor coaching. There's a certificate, but not much more. And so the um, assessment, the, the documentation piece, what needs to be there, and, and it is more than just simply you, you worked these dates. And the other piece is that your supervisor needs to speak about what you're kind of working on. Um, and I even think there's the word progress in there. I'm trying to remember. Like what, what's been the progress as a performance indicator of sorts, right? It's qualitative, but still, I think that's, first of all, very different than the core competencies um, at, you know, the, the foundational core competencies and very different than how we've gone work, work to date as coaches. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very different than what I think the other coaching bodies are doing. So yeah. it's really interesting. It is really interesting, right? And it's, I think it's going to be, it's 2023 as we're recording this, but it's going to be another probably year or two as people get their head around, like what, first of all, does the advanced certification mean? What sort of doors may it open? What might it validate? And one thing to note, just like the PCC, ACC, MCC, right? It's based on practice. So it's not just learning. It's you as a advanced practitioner, and that, of yep. course, is something that doesn't get built in one month, right? This is an ongoing no. learning process. And I, again, I, I started today's call by saying it's been 10 years since publishing From One to Many. And I think about like as not only as an author or a researcher, but certainly as a practitioner, just how many changes we've seen in the last decade with team coaching and you know, I started as a as a team coach in 2002 when I started coaching at, you know, coaching skills. I was a team developer since 1987, but like as a team coach from 2002, and I think, wow, like there's been a lot of shift and a lot of growth. So my hope is today, this is maybe finding its way to you. Maybe you're curious about your ACTC and what the pathway could look like. Again, ICF has just introduced it. So like some other calls, want to get into some of the requirements to sort of plant that seed, as well as talk a little bit about what we're doing here at Potentials Realize. Because 
Um, since 2004, when I opened the doors of this business, my focus has really always been on scaling the coaching conversation to many. Um, as someone who worked in the international development sector, uh, I recognized as I embarked as a young coach in 2004 that change in the world of the people I serve is not generally a one-off conversation. Right? I, I have had the privilege of working with a lot of communities and governments and organizations that have very large reach. And to really activate that change on a macro level, it's rarely a one-off conversation, right? It is very mm -hmm. much about yeah. harnessing that capability. And I know, Kathy, in your work as well, right? That's been a big focus. Do you want to share a little bit about where your focus as a team coach has been? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the main thing for me as a team coach has been helping people appreciate the difference between team facilitation and team coaching, right? So when someone comes and makes a request, um, just I even had this an email to a, someone today where I asked them, are we talking about coaching the individuals in a group on a particular skill set or are we talking about team coaching because you're I'm being presented with a leadership team and I'm trying to clarify what is most useful. I have a suspicion, right? Suspicion is not the right word. I have a hunch, a hypothesis based on my understanding of the program that this is attached to, but it, it is also for them to consider what is it that we're looking for mm -hmm. and to get clarity. It's not the same. It's not the same to provide group coaching on leadership skills and then to talk about how are we as a leadership team? Thank you, right? Hence, from one to many, right? Yep. But my editor came to me in 2011 and said, oh, effective group coaching has been so popular. Can you do another book on group coaching? And I said, you know what? Like, I think we actually need a book on group and team coaching to really start teasing out the difference. And, you know, if you have a copy, take a look at chapters one, two, and three. Uh, you know, what are some of the nuances? What are some of the gradients? One thing I would say 10 years later after releasing the book, there's still a lot of confusion, even in the mind of coaches, not, not even just the clients we serve, but what really is that difference? So just want to sort of, Kathy's intimated, right? Like groups are coming with that individual focus. There might be a shared purpose and maybe a shared focus, but people are really coming to activate themselves and go out and do their work, even in a, a, a in a, a team of leaders, right? At certain levels, they may be more about activating their own team than the team on a horizontal level. So groups, you know, of course, are very wide and often diffuse and diverse and more using perhaps the one-on-one -on -one coaching, although that is debatable. But really in a team, true teams, and, and, you know, that's a strong word of true teams because there's so much diversity in the world of teams today, but I think a common factor, whether it is intact, project, in-person, hybrid, virtual, we want to look at that alignment. How do we create the alignment for the team to harness their collective capabilities surrounded by their context, which may be varied, especially if you're in a hybrid team. So again, the purpose of today is not to get into the evolution. There's lots of calls that you can find, lots of articles that I've written over the years on this. But really, I, I do want to direct you to sort of where we are in early 2023. And I want to give a shout out to an amazing uh, magazine for coaches. It's known as Choice, the magazine for professional coaching this last <laughs> year. They've been celebrating their 20th anniversary and Choice comes out every quarter. And I was very lucky to work with Gary Schleifer, the editor. Um, they've dedicated this last edition, which came out also in December to, and they've called it Team and Group Coaching in an Evolving World. And so this article that you see here, I was able to be the feature article. It's called State mm. of the Union, Team and Group Coaching 3.0. And why I called it 3.0 is because it's the third time I've been asked to do a feature article since 2015 on team and group coaching. So if we sort of look at the progression, um, it's quite interesting for some of you, right? For some of you, it's like, oh, that's not interesting. But if you've been doing this work for a while, I think it is interesting for us to have markers around what is changing and where we are now. So um, if you're interested in hearing more about this, this is a part of the call that I did in December as part of our year-end or 19th annual year-end holiday party. And you can listen to like 
you know, 20 minutes on me talking about these six influences. Certainly head on over to choice-online.com. Uh, check out the, the series of articles because it's not just this article. They always have some great stuff, including tricky issues. So I won't say what the tricky issue is, but it's something that every team coach is going to face. So I'll leave that little hanging piece there. Well, also in December, right, December 2022, we had the announcement that the pilot for ICF was complete. 123 of us, I think, went through the pilot, got our ACTC last year. I know it was a big focus for me starting in fall of 2021, really wanted to, to dedicate time and had to dedicate time because this is not a credential that you just put in a piece of paper. You have to earmark time. So I did a separate call on this. Um, we'll send, we'll include the link to that, but I just want to flag some of the core areas today to get people thinking about Hmm, you know what, I started group and team coaching training with you already. Um, you know, how can I can I apply that? Do I need to learn more? And we'll get to what we're doing here at Potentials Realized and groupcoachingessentials.ca. So ACTC, um, there's a whole series of skills that underpin this work from looking, as Kathy's already said, difference between team coaching, team development, team mentoring, et cetera. We also need to make sure that our learning looks at managing complex dynamics and patterns that are really unique to teams in all their different forms. It is also about partnership with stakeholders, uh, supporting teams in not only communication, but if you look further down, collaboration and conflict, right? So three more Cs, communication, collaboration, mm -hmm. conflict, partnering with the teams to develop that sense of identity and purpose, and promoting their autonomy and long-term sustainability. So very much, you know, a lot of skills, which maybe you've developed some, maybe you developed all, but these are on top of the ICF competency frame. So as someone with an ACTC, you can say to your clients and yourself, you know, I've got specialized skills in these areas of my toolbox. And that's what we're building out. That's what we've been building out for a couple of years now. Um, our pathway to learning is not just team coaching essentials and group coaching essentials and the practicum. Many of you know us through that trifecta, but we actually have a 10 course pathway addressing and incorporating learning around all of these different areas, whether it's through the reconnecting workspaces body of work, which some of you know was my 2021 writing, that book, I think, will forever go down in my world as the tome. <laughs> so my book team, we all called it the tome because it really looks at leadership and teamwork in an evolving workspace. It looks at, you know, collaboration, communication, conflict resolution, all the remote enablers that I was talking about in the seven C's back in 2020. So these are areas, if you don't have skills yet, think about it. Think about how you can build your learning plan. And I'll just go here before I bring in Kathy's voice, but you know, the ACTC is an advanced certification. It's sitting on top of your current credential. So it's really, you know, ICF early on in this process was calling it a specialization. It is not a replacement for your ACC, PCC, MCC. It is an add-on. It is a recognition that you've developed skills, knowledge, and abilities, right? It's really that KSA. So you need to have completed 60 plus hours of team coaching education. Uh, it's not uncommon. I know in my world and, uh, you know, many of us have probably done two or 300 plus hours on team coaching education. Um, there is also need as a minimum to complete at least five team coaching in engagements within the last five years and complete at least five hours of coaching supervision. That is new probably for many of you. And then there is a new co uh, team coaching certification exam. So different than the CKE, which you would take as a just a, a generic coach, there is now a specialized exam uh, based on the competency mapping, based on critical incidents that have been created for team coaches to say, yes, I know and I understand this body of work. And I'm flipping back to what is the body, right? It's here on this list. It's about, do I understand communication, collaboration, how to work with teams on identity purpose, how to work with teams on conflict, because it's inevitable. It is, this is part and parcel of our work. 
So Kathy, I, again, I'm going to leave it really wide for you as you look at these areas, whether it's the requirements or whether it's the skill sets, what are you struck by? Well, um, the 60 hours, of course, are, are important, as you said, and we've positioned our offering as on top of, right? If this is not introductory education, we do not expect um, coaches to come in looking who have, who have just trained or just finished to come in and continue to do this work because you need to have not just coaching, but you have to have some experience with teens. And what we're seeing, especially in the, our current cohort is you know, really great depth of individuals, 20, you know, 15 to 20 years of experience working in the world of work as solopreneurs, um, as leads within an organization, working with entrepreneurs um, and advisory, uh, a whole host of services and experiences which they bring to bear in their team design in, um, interventions. And I think that's really important. Um, the other piece that I think is useful to just note here is the five hours of coaching supervision, which we know it's not just the five hours, it's who is the supervisor. So uh, for those people who have been through other credentialing processes with um, ICF, uh, the super, you, know, you have the mentor coach, right? And that's a little bit different um, and different, uh, you, there are different criteria for who can be a mentor coach. For supervision, it's much more stringent and the, the supervisor has to have experience with team coaching. There's also the application of prior learning, so a recognition that, um, not to say grandfathering in, but people are able to come in who have been, perhaps did their primary learning a long time ago who have done other relevant coursework, um, which is very similar to th those of you who've gone through ACC, PCC portfolio process. Um, but it's a recognition that people have been doing team coaching, but now that there's this framework how to help those people not be left out. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I put up on the screen and you may have noticed it again, all of this can be found over the ICF website, follow the link, but I know that we've had a lot of conversations are starting to get a lot of questions from coaches, you know, can you help us through the pathway? And while that's part of our supervision process, really to work with our supervision clients, coaches, uh, around, you know, what do you have? What do you need? Recognize, as Kathy said, some of you are going to go in that CPL, the, the, the credit for prior learning. And it's a little different, right? But it's it's 10 team coaching engagements, right? 10 team coaching engagements over, you know, five years or more. When team coaching engagements could be six months at a time, you know, this is this is not something that you're going to be doing like right away. So we want to plant the seed for the, the more junior coach who's just starting to really have gone through essentials and is looking at, I want to get my teeth wet, you know, like, how do I do this? So start marking it because there's also, and I haven't really included it here, but there are a few other requirements, right, that you need to have letters of verification for two of the five team engagements. And this, as Kathy said, this is an interesting piece for me to go back to some of those team leads, some who were still in rule, some who were not in rule, um, and sponsors to say, hey, I'm applying for this new credential. Um, I need a letter of support. And what was beautiful about it was actually it allowed for a conversation around what impact had team coaching had on that organization, literally, I found in almost every instance, it was not just the team who benefited, but there was like an imprint beyond the team. And that speaks to systems work, right? That really speaks to the fact that while you can work with a team, they're going to have, you know, they're changing the context in which they operate. So wanted to flag this as another piece, like, again, documenting what you're doing is a key part of the process as well. Another piece here, and we get this question quite a bit, um, you know, what if I'm working with a group that's more than 15 people? What if I'm working with a group that's like 20 or 30? Notice here, third paragraph, team coaching delivered with teams of more than 15 members must include a co-coach. And um, we're, we are launching this year the Co-Coaching Essentials Program. I'm really excited about it. It's going to help coaches who are working with other external coaches, or maybe you're a partnership of internal coaches 
or maybe you're an external coach working with an internal resource. Collaboration and co-coaching is really uh, a critical part of this work, as you would read in chapter 11 of From One to Many. And so how do we work effectively with co-coaches? And that's the full sort of foundation of our new co-coaching essentials, which is in part, you know, designing a collaborative alliance, but it's also knowing who you are and then understanding who you're working with. So co-coaching, notice that. Anything else before we get into some of our programs? I want to share a little bit about our program frame. Kathy, is there anything else you think is important for people to be thinking about right now? It's really to have a vision of what will the certification do for you? Because as you said, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's not as, um, you know, we're going to talk about our pathway, but the pathway isn't straight. And so I think it's important for people to have a purpose in doing it, a vision and have applicability because if you take this these courses and follow this path without application or practice um you you're not really fulfilling the, the vision of the certification it is a certification for practitioners and so yes. be really thinking like how are you building your team coaching muscles and the beauty of this too is you could be doing this with a co-coach, right? Like I think, and I think back to many years and even this business where sometimes I was bringing in the work, but other times it was my team coaching partners who would call me up and say, hey, Jen, just landed like this team. Can you come and help out? Like, can you go coach with me? And it was always really, you know, I'm going back to like 2005 to probably 2009 here in my world. And um, it was really fascinating. Like, you know, it would often be like, a, oh, my partner would get one, I would get one. My partner would get one, I would get one. And again, you know, team coaching is not a one-off. It's not a, a one-day event. It's, it, it could take six to nine to 12 months of your life and your focus because it is more than, you know, and I'm not saying a better than, but it is just a different weight than coaching one person. Right? There's, there's a different rhythm. There's a different weight to this. There's a whole different structure, which is what we really explore in so much of our learning pathways. So I think maybe that's a good good segue, Kathy. Is there anything else you want to mention before we go into our pathway? No, I'm excited to um, introduce the pathway to people. Yeah. And, you know, I will say with supervision, one thing, because it's held separately, I think just on a... Um, you know, on a, on a selection process to really help you do your best work as a team coach, you're going to want to inquire with your supervisor, what background and training do they have in team coaching? Are they using team coaching supervision models, not just seven-eyed model, but are they using the 10-eyed model to, to team coaching supervision? Have they also done some additional training? And we know Kathy and I have both gone through advanced training as team coach supervisors, we know from the small cohort that we've been with and you know the, the others within our network that there's not a lot of us who are specialized in this area. So it's not to say don't work with, but you may have multiple supervisors that you're working with as you you know continue down the path of your career. So we introduced last fall a more formalized learning path. For years I'd heard, oh, well, you offer virtual facilitation essentials and group coaching and this reconnecting workspaces, how does it all fit together? And so really this is the windy road, right? Each one of you is coming at it from different ways. Even to the start of our pathway here at the roundabout, right? Some people are coming in through group coaching, which of course maps to effective group coaching, my first book. Some of you are coming in from the team coaching realm, which maps to more the from one to many. And certainly there's no one right way. I think there's benefit in starting with group because it may be less complex, but team coaching essentials is absolutely imperative and really takes that deep dive into best practices for designing, marketing, implementing, building a business case. Now, Kathy does a lot of the delivery now of team coaching essentials. What do you want to say about that program? Because you now have the benefit of seeing our alumni for the last year go through this process. Yeah, I mean, what's really been wonderful is people to 
learn, unlearn things, um, get affirmation that their gut for certain things was correct. Uh, there, the other day um, was catching up with someone who was just so super clear that no, the team is a client. But still thinking, I, I have, I really haven't done a lot of team coaching education. Um, but they got that real fundamental piece, and they, you know, the classic one that we talk about is, can you coach the founder and the team? And and, and, uh, and I think these are really important questions and useful questions. And and just like with individual coaching, if you're working by yourself, you're a solopreneur or a solo practitioner, and you don't have that. Uh, community? Who do you ask these questions of as you're trying to learn? So what I see is people coming with um, quite a bit of experience. Some people who are newer, but bring other relevant pieces. And team coaching is so complex. It has many different layers that all of that is really useful. So I find such diversity in our our courses um, and people walk away confident and able to apply. And some people have start applying from day one, what they're learning. So that's what I can say about that. It's really been a privilege to deliver that course for the last year. And, and I, I appreciate what you brought to it as well, Kathy, because we know there's so much that you can be learning, right? A lot of people look at my work and go, oh my gosh, you do it all. And you know what? We all start somewhere, right? And that is where Team Coaching Essentials, it really is the foundational primer. And regardless of if you've been coaching and coaching teams for 10 years or 10 days, it's the same foundations, right? Like, let's not overcomplicate <laughs> this work as well, which is the danger, right? It really is making it too, too complex. And so we know that, you know, it's a starting point. And, you know, the work of a team coach or any team developer is ongoing learning. I've been learning about teams for three decades, and I know that there is way, way, way much more that I have to learn in order to really be effective. It's an ongoing muscle building. And that's where we start building muscle in the advanced group and team coaching practicum. Many of you have maybe been with us. I started offering that program in 2010, right? Group Coaching Essentials came online in 2006. Uh, our first group and team coaching intensive, which used to be an in-person program, launched in 2009. So as a business, we've been doing this for a long time now. And we know that the concept, the best practices are not enough alone. We need to embed that in practice and feedback. So the practicum is where coaches come together in a small group, six or less typically, typically, although that might change in some groups, where they get to lead um, calls and as a coach of the week, get feedback on what they brought. So it's a real experience of doing pre-work, doing post-work, really seeing you know part of the coaching arc. And in doing the practicums, we, we've really evolved in over the last you know, 15 years to look at, you know, how do we also give coaches two opportunities to get feedback and practice? Because as we know, it's an iterative learning cycle. We need to apply the feedback that we get. So if you've been with us in the trifecta or maybe seen that term trifecta, that really refers to group coaching essentials, team coaching essentials, and advanced practicum. And that's now expanding out in this last year to three more courses, sort of like trifecta B for maybe people who have been with us, maybe went through when Kathy did in 2015. I had someone who was with me back in 2007. Uh, you know, it's like there are alumni everywhere. And, you know, our fourth course is now called Activating Your Team and Group Coaching Superpower, which, of course, is grounded in the superpower quiz. If you haven't taken that, head on over to bit.ly forward slash GT for group team coaching superpower. And that's going to, that, that course is really about presence and your range as a coach, because we are the instrument, right? That's a term we often use, but we are the instrument and understanding ourselves and how we show up and what we need to dial up and dial back in service to the client is really critical. So that is in some ways a standalone course. Maybe that is where you come in. If you've already done a lot of team coaching training already, but you haven't really thought about yourself in the context of who are you as a team coach and what are your superpowers? And this is actually part of my next body of work, which will come out, fingers crossed, hopefully 2023. Um, that'll be the next book. And 14 CCEs for that course now, 11 or 10.5 core comp and the rest resource development. 
and it leads or goes hand in hand. So it's not a lead into, it's a hand in hand with course five, which is coaching diverse teams and groups through the work styles. And if any of you have done the hybrid work styles, that program looks more now at who is your client, right? It's one thing to look at us, but now who is our client and what are their preferences? How do they like to operate together? As we've seen in recent years, our styles get so magnified if we're working hybrid or remote or even back in person, but not together all the time. And so very much that course, which is five in the pathway, coaching diverse teams and groups using the work styles really gets into that toolkit of like, what can you pull out? What can you look at? And having taken hundreds, more than hundreds now, hundreds, thousands of people, teams through the work styles, um, people really get it. It's a really interesting conversation to have with teams and we've had groups using it as well. So that is five in the pathway. It's also 14 CCEs. And then course number six, which actually rounds out a 70 hour certificate. So a bit above and beyond than the requirement of 60 hours is co-coaching essentials as I've touched on already. And we will put in for CCEs on that and hopefully um, it will be approved, no problem. But again, that is in, that's in the course in development and we'll launch in the spring of 2023. So I think Kathy, we're almost at the, the top of the call. I don't know if you can stay on for a few more minutes, but like anything you wanna mention on, on this first 70 hour pathway? Well, again, I think it's about looking at the vision of what you want to be doing and seeing how best they fit together and going into each of these individual courses, which are, generally 12 weeks every other week or um, every week for six weeks, right? Having a, a goal for each of them. We have our pre-calls, it's part of our um, customer service, right? That we'll, we speak to each person and say, like, at the, you know, what is it that you're looking to get out of this? And in, in the beginning of every course, we also ask the same question, you know, in six weeks, to, uh, three months time, what is it that you wanna walk away being able to do? So really having clarity as to, it's not just the time investment, it's like clarity is what are we trying to get from this? So that when you finish those 70 hours, you've really you know, had these micro goals and that they build and contribute toward your larger vision and a, a stronger practice in service of your team. So what's really exciting for me is that it's even more, right? And many of you actually over the last few years have joined us with virtual facilitation essentials. This is a course I've been running since 2015, years before the pandemic ever happened or showed up on our radar. But you know, a lot of us have continued to work with teams that are global, that span boundaries and may never physically come together. And so if you're an alumni of VFE, as we've called it affectionately over the years, you might want to consider how you could, you know, add on and bundle up to even a 125 hour certificate. And so the sort of last end, tail end, is um, courses that some of you may have already taken. So virtual facilitation essentials. Then we have the coaching business builder or also has been affectionately known as the incubator over the years. That's all about building your business, right? And I know right now in 2023, this is a pain point. So while we offer, I run, I continue to run this year, the bi-weekly coaching biz growth lab, which is like an annual focus or a quarterly focus, the incubator and a coaching business builder is really, you know, an eight week focus, deep dive into building out some of those business elements, your business case, your branding, some of the presentation frameworks for when you go in to either pitch or start building a relationship with uh, a sponsor or a team or a team leader. So it's definitely something to be looking for. The uh, incubator, which you'll probably hear me call it that, or you can call it the coaching biz builder. It is going to be offered sort of on a quarterly basis. So only three or four times in the year. And that is sort of the same rhythm with reconnecting workspaces. So I mentioned reconnecting workspaces. We have more than two dozen reconnecting workspaces certified coaches who've gone through that 24 CCE program really valuable for not only internal coaches, but coaches who are seeing that their work is organizational and working in the hybrid space, especially. And that looks at building out your toolkit in core areas, ranging from teams to leaders, to working around delegation and conflict and collaboration and building a coaching culture. 
So a lot of the C's that you may have heard me speak about over the years really show up in that program. That's 24 CCEs, runs anywhere from a seven week offering to a 10 week. We also do often a three day. It only runs three, three, four, usually three times a year. And then uh, the course that actually is attached, uh, attracting everyone's eye, and they're asking, when are you going to offer it? It will come in early Q2 2023, is Team Coaching Approaches, Experiential Exercises, Learning, and Neuroscience. So this program will capitalize on what I've written on and researched around in all of my books. As many of you know, I was originally trained as a cognitive psychologist at McGill in the late 1980s same time I was an experiential educator. And so really this course gets to weave the science, the art form of great work with teams. And I hope that you'll maybe join us in that quarterly offering down the road. So this is our pathway. We would love to have a conversation with you to see, you know, is there something a la carte, a one-off that you would like to take and learn with us? Or maybe you are interested in the entire pathway. We've just launched our first cohort of a handful of coaches who are with us for the full 125 hours, it will take about a year um, plus plus, you know, because there's supervision and there's practice. So this is not a, you have to get it done in a, in a month, right? This is like a long-term investment for yourself and your learning journey. And we look forward to meeting with many of you. So book a call. I'll include that link as well um, to Kathy, myself, and um, we just look forward to, you know, hearing what you've got in mind with your journey in your ACTC or just journey as a team coach. So Kathy, I'm going to leave final words with you. We've gone a little longer today, but I think that's always good in the virtual okay. space. So um, any final comments from you? No, I'm just really excited for people to come and join us. And it is new, um, but as you can see, it's built on core foundations and new, newer courses are a recognition of what's different in the team coaching space, building on core pieces like your foundational work on working virtually, you know, connection, belonging, trust, but then also a, a recognition too that, you know, we have to be pushing the boundaries like team coaching approaches and making it real. Um, so I, I'm really, really excited. I'm gonna go ahead, Jennifer, and put in the link to contact you, but also put in the link for team coaching uh, essentials. Fantastic. And if you call. can't see the chat, which is likely, calendly.com forward slash Jen Britton, two N's, Jen Britton, you will take you to me and then Kathy and I, and probably down the road, other team coach leaders, you know, and I'm thinking big because I always like to think big. Um, we, we Like my goal this year, I want to take a hundred people through this process, right? And so our team continues to grow because the interest is here, right? And, and again, we appreciate your trust in us and the trust in our track record, um, which has that heavy emphasis on experiential. Uh, it is, of course, a praxis approach. So it's grounded in theory and a practice, really practice first with a bit of theory. And um, a lot of it is, is, you know, virtual and global. That is our focus because most of us work across boundaries and will continue to do so. So we hope that this has been useful. Shirley has raised probably some questions, curiosities. So do set up a call with us. Um, these are a lot of the questions we received. What if I've already taken some potentials realized courses? Well, you can apply it to your pathway, right? What if I want to just take programs a la carte, right? Beyond the initial trifecta of group coaching, team coaching essentials, most of these are designed as you could do a standalone, like you can jump into the superpower course and learn more about your presence without having fully completed everything. Some of them are more connected. And that's why we do these calls to really look at your best um, pathway. We also get questions like, I want more practice. And that's where, you know, in many of our, uh, many of the programs beyond those first three, there are practicum elements, right? Because it's not just about sitting and passively absorbing. That is not, knowledge is not learning, right? And I don't know who said that, but knowledge is not learning. And our orientation is let's get this into practice, even if it's in the safe, safe, safe space of a learning environment like that, which we create. Another question we've received um, in recent months is, do I need to take these in order? Well, there is, the pathway is there for a reason. We have found actually group coaching essentials provides the best anchor 
because we cover things like how adults learn, um, you know, learning styles, which yes, of course, has been debated. And in my work as a group and a team coach, I see learning styles play out every day. But really think about your order, your pre pre experience, and um, if you want to learn intensively, yes, people do take multiple courses at one time if they have the bandwidth. And that is really the question to you. What models do we use? So I am really about providing a survey of different models ranging, as you've heard, from the experiential world to scientific approaches. And as a writer and researcher, I think it's really important that we showcase just the vast variety of models that are out there. When we're in front of a team, the mastery happens when we can pick and we can also fuse different approaches together. That of course takes learning and practice. And so very much, we hope that this is wet your whistle. Kathy, any final words before we go to, go to wrap up? No, I just think that it, this is meeting such a need, not just for coaches, but also I think for the world of work. And that's a topic for another time or work workspaces, work but yes. Um, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the end here, the recent TED Talk, and I think then we can sign off and invite people to reach out and give us a call. Absolutely. So what is still to come, <laughs> just in true team coaching fashion, it never happens in one day, one conversation. Uh, December 1st, 2022, I delivered my second TED Talk. Some of you have seen my 2021 one on virtual remote hybrid, but um, in December here in Toronto, I delivered a, a TED talk called Coaching Teams Through Chaos, where I talk a little bit about six factors of high performing teams, uh, something I've been writing about for the last six years um, and fused it really with the hybrid work styles and a little bit around our superpowers. So that should be coming out during early 2023. Ted is getting back on its feet and professionalizing things. So um, stay tuned and I'll certainly share that. But, you know, chaos is a term I um, was gifted uh, as a young graduate student with one of my supervisors, one of my academic supervisors, whose words of wisdom to me in 1992 or three were simply, Jen, as you embark on your career as a young woman leader, embrace the chaos. And that has been something that has shaped me now for three decades. And I live it, breathe it every day. Chaos shows up in many different ways, but it's interesting how it brings us back to a lot of the principles that you would see from my writing and research. So with that, thank you very much for joining us today. We are doing two community calls now a year, uh, a, year a month, and um, bi-weekly, more or less. And uh, we'll be going through sort of team coaching, group coaching, and the evolving world of work and building culture in organizations as well. So with that, thanks, Kathy, for joining me tonight. I know it's later in your day, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Jen. Well. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.